around LaGrange College at the classes, the clubs, the service organizations, the spiritual life groups, and you'll notice something very interesting. Many of the leaders on campus, students who are willing to step out, students who are willing to put themselves on the line to get things done, are not just students, they're student athletes. Meet nine of our most enthusiastic, confident, and positive student athletes on this edition of LaGrange College Presents. LaGrange College Presents. Um, I'm originally from Atlanta, Georgia, and um, throughout my childhood we moved across the United States because of my father's job. Um, when I was in about ninth grade, we moved to the Bahamas, and I went to an international school in the Bahamas from ninth and tenth grade. Um, I've been playing basketball since I was about third grade. I actually did ballet for most of my life, and then my dad wanted me to take a completely other route, and I tried basketball, and I haven't stopped ever since. Ballet, I guess, did help with like agility and balance and things like that, so yeah, but it wasn't for me in the end. <laughs> Our team chemistry has just really changed throughout the years because like I said, when I first came my freshman year, we had a huge freshman class. There was 12 of us and so we were young dominated and so basically we kind of looked to the older kids to set the tone and it's just completely changed because we have people leave and people come and team chemistry is something that we need off the court and on the court in order to have such successful seasons. And I think since I've been here, our focus has always been on team chemistry and that's why we are so successful on the court. And this year I think that we have paid a lot closer attention to team chemistry. And honestly, that is what I believe is getting us through this season and allowing us to be so successful is our team chemistry and us being able to un understand each other off the court and on the court. And I mean, simple things like a lot of times we'll do team building things with Coach Eisenhower that he'll arrange and we'll go do like, we've done a ropes course before and we do like obstacle course and stuff like that, which I think is awesome. Like it's a lot of fun, but in the same turn, like we are really building that team chemistry and trust that we need on the court. Right now, um, I have a major in biology pre-med and a minor in religion. Um, my goal is to go to medical school and to be a medical missionary. I feel like I've always had a passion to help other people and living in the Bahamas really made me be aware of third world countries and those that are less fortunate. And um, I've always really wanted to, to deliver babies, which is why I want to be an OBGYN in some sort of third world country. Um, for Jan term, I am shadowing an OBGYN at LaGrange Women's Health, which is next to the hospital. And I'm actually not shadowing one of the doctors, but I'm shadowing the nurse practitioner. And I've just really been able to see what an OBGYN does, and that just really confirmed for me that I want to be in the medical field and I want to be an OBGYN. I actually want to have my own private practice in the United States. One of my friend's dads, he actually does this. He has his own private practice, and um, every other summer, he'll take off the whole entire summer to go to a third world country. And usually he'll go there, or I'd like to go there and set up a makeshift, I guess, doctor's office or a clinic to where women can come and get OBGYN advice, maybe deliver babies. And my, the reward for me would just to be able to help those that are completely less fortunate than I am and to be able to aid them in having healthy babies and living a healthy life through, you know, my services. Okay. Um... My full name is Dennis Blake Schuler. I'm from Decula, Georgia, which is a small town up in Gwinnett County. Um, I am a religion major and theater minor, and I'm a junior this year. I'm involved in the cross country team and the swim team. Um, I'm also involved with uh, Wesley Fellowship. I'm on the leadership team for that. And for theater, I'm involved in the shop. I actually work with uh, Nate Tomshek in helping building the stuff. My first big one that I helped out with was Sweeney Todd, actually, and I was in that too, so it was a little crazy. But uh, I did that and Philadelphia Story, and uh, in the most recent play, Metamorphosis, I actually helped build the pool. Tomshek just kind of show, tells you what you need to do and say, all right, you learn how to do it. It was just a great learning experience for me, you know, not only that, you know, I'm learning how to do this new skill, but also that he trusts me enough to let me do this on my own. And so I've really you know, grown from that. I actually started swimming my sophomore year of high school. 
It was something my friend said I should try, and so I did it. And, you know, it was fun. But then uh, once I got to LaGrange and, you know, I met Coach Susie and stuff, that love of the sport actually just came to life. And it's good um, with working with Coach Susie and Dr. Yin because they know and they believe our studies come first and then we swim. And she does a good job of working our practices around our schoolwork and stuff. And that's one thing I think that's, you know, kept me here and kept me swimming. Um, at first, when I got here, I had no idea. I was just kind of, you know, going with a religion major. Uh, I knew I wanted to be somewhere in the ministry full time. And this past summer, I actually believe I had a calling to camp ministry. Camp Glisten, uh, originally I helped out with a program called SLR, which is Spiritual Life Retreat. It's a weekend retreat uh, that usually happens in March. Um, and it usually, you know, just a way, time to get away and you know, help other, help high schoolers and middle schoolers grow in their faith. Um, I actually, you know, asked if I could work there, you know, one year, and the director at the time said, actually, we could use you next week. And so I worked there for about three years, even into my freshman year in college. And then uh, this past summer, I became a camp counselor during the summer program. And that just opened my eyes to this whole new world, you know, that I'd never seen before. I applied again this year and I'm actually now a site director for a program they call Day Camp, so I'm moving up in the world. Um, well, I knew I wanted a small college, a smaller college, because I came from a smaller high school and I didn't want to be lost in the crowd. It ended up, I was able to go to the Presidential Scholarship Competition and I was able to I was so blessed to be able to receive one of those. I've always played softball ever since kindergarten on because I have three older sisters and they all played softball so I was always trying to keep up with them. I came here as a catcher but I was changed to shortstop last year so I'm more of a shortstop now and kind of a backup catcher. Um, I'm coming here, I wanted to be an early childhood education major but I ended up deciding to choose math I love the logic of it, and I love the challenge of working through a problem and knowing I have the right answer. Like, I, I absolutely love that. It's almost like I've always loved puzzles, and you know, puzzles, everything has its piece, everything works together, everything fits and looks nicely in the end. Um, I'm in GOBS, which is the girls only Bible study. I'm also a tutor in the tutoring center, which is really awesome. I was blessed to be um, a part of that this year. SAC, which is the Student Athlete um, Advisory Committee, you get to be on like conference calls with other schools and things like that and it really is just a way to make the students, um, student athletes have a voice and if there's any issues with coaches or professors or practices or anything like that they can bring it to us and we can bring it up to other things and try to get it taken care of. I also am an FCA, Fellowship of Christian Ath Athletes, and that's really awesome. It's for student athletes, but anybody is welcome. We have um, people who used to play sports or people who don't play sports at all. We welcome anybody, and that's just mainly a time for the students to get together and have a time to fellowship with one another. We usually, you know, have prayer requests at the beginning and end so that, you know, everyone knows about everyone's, like, weeks, and if there's any struggles that anybody's going through, we can pray for them. And, um, having a spiritual life group provides support for student athletes especially to be more sportsmanlike, um, to have good sportsmanship and to be able to be gracious in winning and losing. Being an athlete helps us be a better person all around. Um, supporting other people and being encouraging to other people, not having a bad attitude because that goes into everything in your life. And I'm Kendrick Hudson. I've been here since uh, fall of 2009. I started playing basketball when I first got here. I'm initially from Brooklyn, New York. That's where I was born. My family is from Guyana, and that's where I spent uh, most of my life. I went, uh, went to school there up until I was 10 or 11 years old. And then my family relocated to Conyers, and I've been in the Georgia area ever since. I actually never touched a basketball until my ninth grade year of high school. I didn't play high school basketball. This is actually the first uh, team I've played for. Uh, growing up in Guyana, I actually did play cricket. I don't know if you've heard of it. <laughs> that's what I used to, I used to play that. You know, me and my dad, we used to play a lot. That's, uh, that's pretty much what I occupied my time doing once I wasn't in school. I was outside in the yard playing cricket. 
kind of hard to describe. It's, uh, I believe it was a sport that originated in England or India, one of the two. Um, and it's kind of like a variation of baseball, but with a flat bat and the ball actually bounces. You don't pitch it. <laughs> As a student assistant, I, uh, I just help with the little things, making sure the guys are ready for practice, filling up water coolers, making sure their towels and stuff are available. And I do also do a lot of film exchange with other coaches, whether it's preparing us for another game, downloading the film so he can watch it, or us uploading our game so that we can, you know, exchange film with other coaches. Most of the uh, recent accomplishments that we've had have been mostly in part to uh, Coach Wallace. I mean, he's, he's a great head coach. Whether it comes to uh, recruiting, uh, how he handles practice, game situations, he's, he's a great guy. Um, last season we went 12 and 15, which is uh, a major improvement from our 5 and 22 record the year before. He always says that you're a student athlete, whereas you're a student first and an athlete after. So I think it's definitely been helpful for all of the guys on the team. Well, last summer I went back to Guyana to help my dad out with his business a lot. He was kind of short on staff. And what I did was I did a lot of bank reconciliation, whereas I looked at his financial statements and I looked at what the bank had, and I kind of compared them side by side. And it's a little different because it's not the same standards that you have here in the United States, obviously, but it was, it was a learning experience for me. I had a lot of fun. In 10 years, um, I'm still kind of undecided. I've actually been interested in management recently where I want to open my own business like my dad has. Or I could possibly be a CPA or working with the IRS. I still, I still haven't decided yet. But I do intend as well to go to grad school later on, probably two or three years from now. Um, a lot of firms do actually pay for students um, who work for them to go to grad school. So if I could get an opportunity like that, of course I wouldn't turn it down. <laughs> My name is James Hall. I'm from Hawkinsville, Georgia, and I'm a history major and a coaching minor. Oh yeah, that was that was the goal ever since I was a little boy was was going to play in college, and luckily I was able to do that. College ball is a lot different from high school ball because the game moves a lot faster. There's a lot more focus required. It's not so much talent based as you need to be able to think and be able to act quickly. My freshman year actually went pretty well. I, I thought I did pretty well for being a freshman. It was a normal day, a normal game. I stepped into the box and I swung at a high pitch, a pitch that I probably shouldn't have swung at. And when that happened, my shoulder came out of place, had MRIs done, and uh, they found a small tear in my labrum. And uh, went in and had surgery a month later and it turned out the labrum was torn worse than they thought it was and it turned out to be like a six month process for it to be completely healed. The right arm injury that occurred, we were playing um, against Emory in LaGrange. I was playing right field and a shallow fly ball was hit. So I ran over to get it and I had to dive to catch it. And when I dove, I landed on an outstretched arm. We knew that something was the matter and the same thing had happened to my right arm. I had torn my labrum and part of my rotator cuff. So I had surgery in, on June for it. After, after my first surgery, I was like, I'm, I'm going to keep playing. I'm going to keep playing. But after the second one, I was like, why, why, why me? You know, you kind of ask, why, why, did, why did this happen to me? I think the thing that kept me going was I've played it so long. You know, it's just, it's like a part of my childhood. And then after that surgery, after the surgery on my right arm, when I thought about quitting, I was just like, James, you, you don't have very many competitive baseball games left. I felt like I needed, I owed it to myself, you know, of all the things that, that I've been through. That it was just kind of like, um, kind of like a me thing almost. Like I owed it to myself to do this. Like this was like a big like thing in my life for me to overcome. Um, I, I, it took me a while to kind of decide my major. I didn't know what I wanted to do. I decided on history. You know, it's something that I knew I would like. Uh, the professors here are really good. I like Dr. Pascal too. He, he always just comes up and asks me, how'd you do? Or, I saw where you did good the other day, but then some days he'll be like, oh, I saw where you went uh, 0 for 4 today, James. What, what was that about? <laughs> the plan is right now to go to law school, but that's what both my, that's what my dad, my granddad, and my uncle did. So I come from like a law kind of like background, but if that doesn't work out. Who knows, you know, I'm leaving all doors open right now if law school doesn't pan out. Yeah, I'm really looking forward to my senior year. Hopefully this summer I'll actually be able to 
do things that most other baseball players do, like get you know, bigger and faster and stronger, and not have to sit in a recliner or sleep in a recliner with a sling on all the time, you know. So I'm really looking forward to my senior year because I wasn't, to be honest, I wasn't even expecting to play as much as I was able to this year. So my senior year is going to be a lot of fun. With him. The night, the night before I played, I just noticed some swelling in my arm. I didn't think anything of it at the time, so I went and played eight hours of basketball the next day, which was really probably not a good idea if I had known. The next day, got home and my arm just, it was huge. It, I was calling myself the Incredible Hulk, we were just joking around because I mean, and I went downstairs with my dad and said, you know, look at this is, I think there's something wrong. I got the ultrasound and it came back that I had a blood clot. I just had to, everybody left the room and I kind of was shocked. I felt like I was going to pass out, but when I was when I was born, they had to, I was 10 pounds 9 ounces. So they had to break my collarbone to get me out. So and they think when when the collarbone healed, it formed a little knuckle. So I had a little little bump on it. And they think that that was putting pressure on the vein. If that clot would have dislodged, it would have just fall down the bloodstream into my heart and then I would have just, that would have been bad. They removed my first rib. Emergency surgery, they moved, removed my first rib, which um, relieved the, it, it gave the vein more space. They told me I was never going to be able to play again. After the surgery was done, usually people are on their, their pain medication for a week or two. I was on it for two days because I just wanted to I just want to get through this, just do what I used to do, be who I used to be, and so um, I went up for my first checkup a week later and he was just shocked, like he couldn't believe that I wasn't feeling any more pain or, or anything. They just couldn't believe it, he'd never seen anybody recover that fast before. And um, November 1st came around and I was out on the court with my team practicing and it was just like a real surreal, special feeling. I'm never really upset or mad about anything anymore because, I mean, just, okay, worse things can happen. You could be laying in a bed, hospital bed for a week rather than arguing about, you know, if the ball went out of bounds or something. So, I mean, just always stay positive. Uh, people underestimate how much that really, really helps. I thought my chances were good, but I wasn't, I wasn't really expecting it. My mom walked me on the field, and I told her, I was like, this is kind of like a, I guess a big deal, but we just kind of went out there with just like open hearts, open minds, and you know, whatever happened, happened. They said it, my mom was like, they just named you Hulk Queen. I was like, what? Really? And so there's like pictures of me and my mom freaking out. Like, oh. I'm from Fayetteville, Georgia, and I'm a senior graphic design major. I'm part of Farm Youth Sorority. Um, I'm on SGA, I'm the secretary. I'm a social council member. I'm a hilltopper. I haven't been a cheerleader for a while, since like middle school, but just coming here, I was like, all right, my last year I should probably do a sport. Well, after I graduate, I really want to go to grad school overseas. Um, I really, I'm looking into schools in London, um, in the UK and stuff, so I kind of want to branch out from America, but I don't know, I feel as if going abroad would really, like, challenge me a lot more than what I'm used to here, and um, that's like one of the biggest things that I really want to do is just go to a school or find somewhere to work over overseas. Well, I had the wonderful opportunity of attending LaGrange College uh, in 1995. I was a freshman. I came in very shy, uh, introvert, very reflective. And now, because LaGrange College has given me so many opportunities, 
I love going to talk to people to try to help this community. LaGrange College is the institution that wanted me and influenced me to reach out to the LaGrange community through my work on communities and schools, um, the United Way. I ended up being a loan executive for the United Way. And then I ended up coming on to the Big Brothers, Big Sisters Board of Directors as well. And now I'm actually working with Boy Scouts too. So. Uh, LaGrange College just, just takes you from where you are and they give you the tools to become anything you want to become. It, it's a privilege for me to coach softball because they just give so much to the game and you learn so much through athletics. How do you, how do you deal with adversity and how do you realize your role? and understand that your role may be different, but it's just as significant. You know, we put pinch runners in, and if they had not been available, we would not have gotten those runs across because their speed made the difference. Without those runs, we don't win. And so even though they may have just played, you know, one inning or just that one spot, it mattered. And I really feel that the team embraces their roles and they lean on each other. And so that's kind of what softball has taught me, that you take what you do on the field, but you also take it into life when you're dealing with adversity, patience, understanding, enthusiasm, motivation. But the, one, the biggest thing that I love about LaGrange College in Division Three is our focus on academics and that the girls can balance academics and athletics. And I just think that a lot of what they learned and how to interact and how to work as a team um, has helped them in their career choices and utilizing their gifts to be, you know, positive contributors to society. My name is Knox Robinson. I'm from Darien, Georgia. I played football here for three years. I'll be graduating this May with uh, a political science and sociology degree. I just came off the CHIP program in Washington, D.C. for this fall semester. The CHIP program is the Capitol Hill Internship Program. It's done through the United Methodist Church's Washington Consortium, which is just a group of Methodist schools, much like LaGrange, from all over the country. Uh, we have a house in Stanton Park, which is three or four blocks behind the Capitol building in Washington, D.C., in the historic Capitol Hill neighborhood. There were 27 of us in this class. You know, you also have to take classes. I, ha I had a class on Wednesday night uh, taught by a guy who's a senior intelligence analyst at the CIA. That was a really cool experience. After the one-hour class on Friday morning, we would go out and pretty much on a field trip. Um, some of our field trips, like we got to go to Arlington for free. We got to go to Thomas Jefferson's Monticello in Charlottesville, Virginia for free. We got to go to Mount Vernon, which is George Washington's old home for free. Pretty much you just get the full Washington, D.C. experience. Sojourners. Sojourners is an evangelical nonprofit political advocacy organization and it's also a magazine. It was started by Reverend Jim Wallace in the, in the 1960s, um, kind of a spillover from the, from the human rights movement. Uh, I work primarily in immigration and climate care. Um, I got to go to New York uh, for the second presidential debate uh, with a group called Young Evangelicals for Climate Action. We spoke at the protests and and, and sing hymns and, and just talk to other people about, about climate action, hoping that, you know, maybe we could have an effect. Um, not so much that night, but, you know, it, it was kind of a sweet moment when Barack Obama really talked about climate, you know, climate change in, in his inaugural address, because it, it does seem like progress to be made on that front. I did a lot of the social media stuff for, for immigration reform, so it was also, you know, kind of sweet to see that, you know, that, that's, that's become a, something that, that Congress is working on. Um, we made a DVD back in the fall called The Line, which is an amazing DVD about, about poverty in America and how the poverty line's gotten to the worst point since the 1960s. And um, uh, one of the coolest experiences I had while I was up there was we got to go to the Capitol and uh, deliver a copy to every, every member of the Senate, every member of the House of Representatives, which was really, really cool. Just getting to walk around in there and you know, going into different offices um, and, and hoping that you know, our work's making a difference. See, I just, I just feel like as, as, as Christians, we have a responsibility to look out for the least of these, like Jesus talks about in Matthew chapter 25, which is always, that was kind of my passage of the Bible that really brought me 
guess, into Christianity full force and passionately. And so, I mean, I just, I just want to follow the example of those who, who have helped, you know, bring me up and bring me to where I am, and you know, just place, place others over self, and you know, use my advantages and my blessings to help people. Well, being from Florida, I told you I came here because of a friend. I got kind of got lucky in that aspect for basketball, but everyone's been so nice to me at this college, and even though it's a small town, I kind of like that. After high school, I basically took a year off. I kind of attended the university in town, and I hated it. It was too big. I could never find a place to park. Here, I can wake up and walk to my class. I, I really love it. I uh, took a class that my friends were taking. It was a philanthropy class called Where Your Treasure Is. Um, I had no idea what philanthropy was, what it meant, anything like that. Um, about the third day in class, we started learning about stewardship and how we are stewards of the Lord and everything here on earth belongs to Him and that, that really stuck with me. Um, when I called him, I went home from class that day. We have to write in our journals every day, so I wrote for class and then I called him because in class, it said that day that where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. And we were talking about like materialistic things and stuff like that. And I, I just thought like, he's where my treasure is. He's my family. And I told him how much I loved him and how much I appreciated him. I also told him about the class and he was proud of me for kind of thinking outside the box. At the uh, end of class, instead of having a test for it, we actually went with gift officers, with people who gave back to the college. It was cool, Will, um, he arranged it so that me and my partner Kelsey could go meet with uh, alumni that actually played basketball. It was cool. Judy Greer, she was wonderful. She showed us her yearbook. She actually showed us her um, her varsity jacket, which they don't have here anymore, but it was, it was like a sweater, not even the jacket, and it was awesome. And she was a part of the first basketball team for girls here, back when there was not even boys. And like I said, in taking the class, I had really only heard sorority girls and fraternity guys talk about it, something that like, they had to do. I had no idea what it meant. I didn't know it was charity or anything like that. And I was kind of going into class thinking like, oh, another class, but it's honestly one of the favorite classes I've ever had, ever. It, it made me think a lot and it made me really appreciate the things in my life, just everything, even my education, like going back to stewardship. God gave me my education and I'm so lucky to have it and to be here. I think I really want to give back when I get older, no matter what I do, even if I don't pursue a job in philanthropy, I definitely want to give back. Student athletes at LaGrange College are special people. They realize that there are only four roles in every game. You can play, you can coach, you can officiate, or you can be a fan. You have to pick one, do your absolute best, and respect the rest. Student athletes at LaGrange College stay enthusiastic, confident, and positive. Baby, I got that feeling, baby. Baby, come on.